Anyway, so we have system and surroundings. And then, um, I know you already know all this. The, uh, the definition of exothermic and endothermic, I represent it like this. You have the arrows going out, which means that energy, heat energy is leaving. That's endothermic. It is? It's exothermic. And then the endothermic, of course, is the opposite. I mean, you don't even need to write that down. I assume that you know that very well already. That's fine. I know you're not going to forget that. I know you already know that well. There's the law of conservation of energy, which says that this system, which is the uh, combination of these ions, uh, that's exothermic because when they join together, that releases energy. And then the water is taking that energy from it. So you do have something giving up and something taking in. You say that the process for the water is endothermic because it's gaining energy, and the reaction is exothermic. Chang Yi, make sure that you get the entire picture. I may want to submit that possibly for a competition. Okay. <laughs> You're not going to submit it yourself before I get to that thing, are you? Say that you drew it? I don't know. Did you get it in my fridge for it? So we have the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, I love the picture, although, did, do you think this is an actual picture taken? No. Yeah, for sure. No. No. Yes. So realistic. No graphic design. If it were actually taken, then we would not be here studying chemistry, I assure you of that. We would have the fate of the dinosaurs. Yeah, everything. Who knows? Maybe that was taken during the dinosaur. Oh, that could be. Could be. Yep. yep. It takes a long time to get here. Uh, so, you know, why not? Anyway, um, this really picture has nothing to do with the first slide. I just liked it. Um, the energy in the universe is constant. Really, that is stating the law of conservation of energy. If something gives off heat, something else has to take the heat. So, the, the total amount of energy never really changes. It just went from one thing to another. So if we're talking about a system, uh, this is a change in energy for a system. And if it loses, that energy went to something else. If it gained, that energy came from something else. Yeah, this is a really abstract question, but you know how like the Big Bang, like the Big Bang has like, all the energy is released. So we're using that to take energy. Steady state theory. Is that the one where it's just like certain types of people will like be first or whatever? Isn't there like you know, two in terms theory? of origin of the universe, uh, yeah. Big Bang is widely accepted more than anything else. There's a steady state theory that says nature has always been there, it's just been going like this. Right now it's in this motion, but then eventually it's going to start doing this. Meaning that it's going to like go away? Like no, it'll just, uh, it, it's like it's a heart. That's Right now we're in a, a time in, in history when the universe is expanding. After some time, it's going to start coming back together. That's the steady state, which means that, so that really mean there's like there no beginning and no end. Uh, it just does this. Not too many people buy into it, but it's out there. So the big thing is just like the universe is just dead. It's constantly expanding. Oh. From the beginning of time, which that time was the time of the big bang that everything is going apart and it continues to go apart. Okay, thanks for getting us off uh, topic. Uh, I told you it was going to be <laughs> It's okay, that's all right. Uh, I was going to say one other thing about this, and it wasn't about the picture. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, now, this is going to sound silly, but I do want to suggest that um, in the end, the end two sections of this chapter, chapter six in the book, uh, the Zoom dolls go through and they discuss this idea that the energy in the universe is constant. Now you hear politicians and scientists say, well, we're in an energy crisis. We're going to run out of fossil fuels. We're going to run out of this or that. Um, but yet we look at this and we see, well, the energy is constant. How can we be running out of energy? Well, the answer is that we can't. And the authors do a very nice job, and it's easy to read. 
of talking about how it's not the amount of energy that we're concerned about, it's the amount of concentrated energy. Like we have petroleum. There's a lot of energy contained in one kilogram of petroleum. So when you burn it, you know, you can run your car around and, and uh, fly airplanes and all that kind of thing. That's because all that energy is very, very densely uh, concentrated. When that burns, that energy is used and it's still there, but it's dissipated and it's dispersed. And it's to get it more concentrated again, you have to take that carbon dioxide and, and get it to concentrate into a plant, right? And, and then you can burn the plant again. But um, the amount of concentrated energy is our issue. It's not the total amount of energy. So I know that I said that I would sound silly. If you have the interest, uh, read the last couple of sections in this chapter. It's not going to be on any test or quiz. Uh, there's no homework assignment uh, that goes with those sections. But uh, if you're looking into um, environmental science or chemical engineering maybe, if you think uh, alternative fuels uh, may be something you're interested in, then that is an interesting uh, little bit of reading. And it's not hard and it doesn't make you a nerd if you read it on your own, uh, but it does make you think and it makes you a little bit more educated and gives you a difference in perspective. So uh, I just wanted to throw that out there. Now, uh, you do see that sometimes negatives are popping up and, uh, where you wouldn't even expect them maybe. Like in our reading quiz, that first question about the uh, um, the work being done if a gas expands. A positive delta E, now we're going to take on that whole work sign uh, here before we're done, but positive delta E means the system has gained energy. Maybe heat has been added to it or work has been done to it, but it means it's gained energy. And then of course negative means that energy is lost. This can record. Oh, until we're done. Just keep going. Yep. Are we getting tired? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you do read those uh, couple of sections in the end of chapter six, tell me, and I want to hear what your uh, what your feedback is, what your impression was. Tell me if, if it was worth reading to you, or if you think um, oh, no more, and you're kind of out there. <coughs> There's only a few pages, not long. There's no equations or anything like that. It just talks about the, uh, um, you know, the energy situation. What's that? I, I couldn't remember right off the top of my head, but I'll tell you. Present sources of energy is uh, section 6.5 and 271. And new energy sources on it starting on 265. So it's the last two sections, 65 and 66. I guess it is a few, uh, but it's, I don't know, I found it very interesting. Not because I just have to read about science in order to, you know, live through my day, but it just is something that's very relevant to us. And your generation, too. When you're my age, we might not have much petroleum. Our car's going to run on gas still? Probably not. So there's a lot that's going to have to happen between you know now and the next 30 years or so. Those are the ducks that are running heat through when they expand. The ducks? Oh. <laughs> ducks. D U C T. <laughs> wow. That's right. I will tell you, uh, my family, uh, we live on a lake up in Oxford. It's a small lake. It's like a big pond, I guess. But um, we didn't take them from GBB, but we bought some ducks last year. We have five kids, and my wife went out and bought five ducks. Uh, and they are the nicest pets. They just live in our lake, um, and they hang around because we feed them. We feed them a couple times a day. And uh, they'll come up, you know, like when I get home, the ducks will be walking up from the lake on, on the, the roadside of the house, and uh, they'll talk, you know, they'll just, they quack. Um, but they're very social, and they're like saying, hey, I'm home, you're, you know, you're home, it's time to feed us. Um, and they're so nice. Uh, it really is cool to have ducks. So if you do have GBBD, it's a pretty cool experience. Yep. And if you can find a way to keep your ducks, you'll really enjoy it. I didn't know that they You can keep them. Uh, the white ducks, uh, they don't fly. 
They even stay around in the wintertime. The lake freezes, and they just hang around in the snow. They hang around in the snow. Did yours die? Yeah, mine didn't. Mine didn't work. We've been through a lot of ducks. I mean, we've had a lot of ducks. Okay, when you take a look at this, this is a cylinder with a piston in it. Now, piston just means that you've got a uh, sealable ring here that can move inside and out, compress the gas or expand the gas. The pressure that the piston feels is the force that the particles are hitting it with over the area of that piston, that thing right there. Are there, are there pistons in, like, cars? <laughs> yeah, that's it's the same thing, right. Your car has a cylinder, and there's a little opening here, and uh, when the piston is out like this, no, when the piston is moved in, uh, there's an injector that sprays gasoline in there, uh, a little mist of gasoline. And then you have your spark plug, of course, uh, and that explodes, or it, it sparks, and burns the gasoline, that pushes the uh, piston out. And so you, the end of your piston is attached to this, uh, this thing called a, a camshaft that, uh, that turns. You ever see the, uh, the top of a merry-go-round? Uh, the horse go up and down because the uh, things are twirling? That's what is going on in your car. So it's the in and out, and it causes that thing to turn, and that's attached to other wheels that turn, and, and ultimately that, that translates physics? to your car. That's all physics, yeah. The burning, of course, is chemistry, but uh, everything else is physics. Yeah. physics. Would you right? be hurt if you hey. heard that we said that we like physics more? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would. No, I like. I always liked physics. I never saw myself going into. It. I really, I truly loved physics when I was taking it. But I just liked chemistry so much more. I just a taste, personal taste. Whoa. I feel like we're in storm. It has, yeah, it has not been this loud yet this year. Sometimes it goes like this. Wow. Anyway, I'll talk about it. I'm going to move over here. Brandon, this is for you. Um. Now. Again, if the gas inside is able to expand, maybe it's heated or whatever, and the gas expands, what's going to happen to the piston is going to get pushed out. That's the only thing that can happen. Nothing else can happen with this except the piston gets pushed out. Now, this is considered, this is a cylinder, and the height of the cylinder is defined like this. If the piston gets pushed out, maybe to that point, we're at the very end of that uh, cylinder. This distance right here would be considered delta H. The change in the height. So that's what I'm saying. Work is force times distance. We talked about that yesterday. Force exerted over a distance is how we define work. So if the gas is able to push this piston out, right now it's right here, and if it goes out to there, then the force times the delta H it defines the work. We have two expressions that involve force then. There's that force and there's that force. And they're in two different contexts. I'm going to put those together. I'm going to solve this thing for force. Force equals what? AP. Pressure times area. Right? AP. All right, so anyway, work was force times distance. I just replaced the force with pressure times area. That's my force right there, times delta H. So what would the area of this thing times delta H represent? What does this thing mean? This distance of a cylinder times the area it would be the volume the, the, of the displacement. Right. Delta G. So that's where we get that whole idea of work equals pressure times delta V. Times delta v. Um, that was a quick little derivation. I didn't want to say I was going to derive it because you'd say, oh, you derived the ideal gas law. I can't do this. But that's all the derivations are about. So quiet here. That's kind of strange. Did you feel it get warmer in there when that happened? Yeah. 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 Did you? Yeah, Any yeah. questions about driving or on a hood? Wait, should pressure be negative? Okay, now, shouldn't this term be negative? The book had work equals negative P delta V. I want to address that on the next slide. 
Um, expansion requires the system 